Hello everyone, I'm Matt Mitrovich, the Alternate Historian. It's time again to analyze another alternate history map, except this one was made by a professional historian. This is A Lesser United States from Donald Meinig's four-volume magnum opus, The Shaping of America, A Geographical Perspective on 500 Years of History. For those who don't know, Meinig is an award-winning geographer and historian. He is currently a professor emeritus at Syracuse University. A Lesser United States is meant to show what America might have looked like if the Mexican-American War never happened, and the United States never got its southwest. In our timeline, America's annexation of Texas in 1845 led to a dispute with Mexico over land that both countries claimed. When fighting broke out in the disputed territory, it kicked off the Mexican-American War that lasted from 1846 to 1848. What followed could be considered a curb stomp, with American armies advancing all across Mexico and occupying their capital, Mexico City. The Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo ended the war and ceded 500,000 square miles of territory that today includes Texas, California, New Mexico, Arizona, and parts of Colorado, Utah, Wyoming and Nevada. I've read articles praising Donald's map, but I have to ask, is it really that plausible? Now I haven't read The Shaping of America, so I don't know what Donald's point of divergence was. But I have read Susan Sultan's blog, Mapping the Nation. In an article about the map, she speculates that if Henry Clay defeated James K. Polk in the 1844 presidential election, the Mexican-American War wouldn't happen, and a lesser United States would be a reality. In our timeline, Henry Clay was a politician and skilled orator from Kentucky. He was Speaker of the House, Secretary of State, the brains behind many compromises that kept the peace between the states, and ran unsuccessfully for President of the United States three times, the last attempt being in 1844. Although a Southern slave owner, Clay championed many Northern causes like a central bank, high tariffs, and using federal funds for internal improvement. He also opposed the annexation of Texas. The 1844 election was a close vote, with Polk beating Clay only by 30,000 votes. If the Liberty Party, an anti-slavery third party, had not stolen votes away from Clay, he might have just managed to eke out a win and become president. Clay's victory would have convinced then-President John Tyler that there was no majority support for the annexation of Texas, and thus he would not champion it as one of the last acts of his presidency. Would this mean that America's westward expansion would end? Probably not. There were other factors that historians suggest led to American westward expansion, including the low price of land, population growth, and an improving transportation network. Thus, even with this setback, societal and economic pressures, like the need for new land to grow cotton, would have eventually pushed America's western border to the Pacific. That said, for the sake of argument, let's assume a President Clay does put the brakes on America's drive west, at least temporarily. Is a lesser United States still plausible? Let's break it down by all the changes, starting with Texas. In alternate histories, Texas is the most likely American state to be independent in the present, besides the Confederate States of America. I always found this to be a tad implausible. While Texas did gain recognition from foreign nations like the United States and France, Texas independence was based on a treaty signed at gunpoint and never ratified by Mexico. Meanwhile, despite the size of the territory Texas claimed, the Texan government only ever controlled a portion of it and were often unable to prevent Mexican incursions into their territory or Native American raids. On top of this, there was a lot of conflict in Texan politics that sometimes led to violence. Texas must have realized how precarious their position was due to their multiple offers for the United States to annex them. Personally, I feel that if Texas was never annexed, it would be absorbed back into Mexico, much like the Republic of Yucatan or the Republic of the Rio Grande. The state of Deseret may have a better chance since their citizens would be unified by their shared faith in the Mormon religion. But if it had to face Mexico alone, it might not survive. Since I already did a whole video discussing Deseret, I won't say much more. Just go check it out. Then there is California. In our timeline, there was a short-lived California Republic in 1846 that lasted for 25 days. A group of illegal American immigrants around San Francisco, who weren't aware of how ironic that would be over a century later, rebelled on June 14th and declared an independent republic, but promptly joined the United States when the army showed up. If the Mexican-American War never happened, such a rebellion would no doubt be crushed by Mexico, but that doesn't mean California couldn't be independent. If Mexico is unable to prevent the flood of illegal immigrants, especially after discovery of gold, it could likely break away like Texas, perhaps even in conjunction with Deseret. That said, such a rich state might be annexed by a larger state, like the United States, Great Britain, France, or even Russia. Now let's look at the situation regarding the Pacific Northwest. In our timeline, Britain and the United States both claimed the Oregon Territory. After Polk was elected president, many urged him to accept nothing less than the 5440 parallel as the northern border of Oregon. But with war with Mexico looming, Polk instead agreed to a border on the 49th parallel that was proposed earlier by America. Who made this initial proposal? Henry Clay! He actually made this proposal while he was Secretary of State in 1826, and yet somehow a lesser United States and Susan's article implied that he would accept even less while he was President. That doesn't sound plausible to me at all. 
Before I finish discussing a lesser United States, there is something I should point out. America's westward expansion, and whether the states carved out of the new territories would be free or slave, contributed to the deepening divisions that led up to the American Civil War. It's possible that if Texas did not join America as a slave state, the balance between free and slave states would end. For example, one of Clay's famous compromises, the Compromise of 1820, kept a balance by allowing Missouri to join as a slave state and Maine to join as a free state. Without Texas, the balance between free and slave states would eventually tip in the favor of the free states, and it could start an earlier American Civil War, unless Clay pulls another compromise out of his hat, perhaps by letting slavery spread further into the Great Plains. There is a school of thought among alternate historians that the earlier the American Civil War happens, the more likely the South would win. This is because the industrial, transportation, and population advantages of the North would not be as great. Thus, a Clay presidency could lead to a rump United States. Perhaps if Texas could hold out long enough for this to happen, it would join the Confederacy and maybe even touch off a Mexican Confederate war. I could speculate further, or even cover a lesser United States sister map, a greater United States, but then I would be getting away from what a lesser United States represented. Although it has some flaws, it's still not an impossible counterfactual, and it is good to see professional historians ask what if from time to time. At the very least, it got people to think about what the United States could look like if it decided it didn't need to add a lone star to its flag. Well, that is all I have to say on the subject. If you like what I do, please comment, subscribe, share this video, or support me on Patreon. I'm Matt Mitrovich, the alternate historian. Bye. Texas must have realized how precarious their position was due to their multiple offers for the United States to enact them.